Okay, starting right off in this one by adding multiple objects into the scene. I knew I wanted to work with, uh, similar to the one we covered yesterday, I knew I wanted to work with more of a composite design this time. More objects in play. Uh, not just taking a single object and then trying to make it, you know, the most interesting form possible in isolation. Just doing some more composite works. Also trying to build in a fun angle early on here. Um, I mentioned <clears throat> in the video yesterday that that design ended up being pretty linear, pretty much kind of just a tube, even though it was like detailed well and it had interesting forms um, along it. It was basically just along a single axis, it didn't really have any energetic, you know, transitions of direction. Um, so that's what I'm trying to build in here, is just a, uh, a piece that is going to kick off a secondary axis that we can build more primitives on top of later. using some of the new uh, alignment tools I picked up on my ongoing add-on quest for Blender. <clears throat> Starting to throw some bevels on these things just as modifiers so that they're all live. Since I'm doing the uh, decal heavy workflow these days, um, this is, you know, just throw the bevel uh, modifier on these and you're pretty cl close to what the final geo could look like uh, as a basis for just supporting the decals and the panel lines. So. You can take advantage of a lot of uh, parametric tools such as that. Which are just not so quick or whatever with Boolean heavy modeling. Starting to round out some corners and trying to add some edge interest and figure out some silhouette interests in this whole middle area, I'm trying to make sure it looks different when, or make sure it looks interesting no matter what arbitrary angle you spin the camera around to. <clears throat> also trying to get some contrast in the shapes, so we have these large, chunky, blocky, brick-like shapes, we have these really thin wires that I've just added in here. I shouldn't get ahead of myself, but in a little bit we're going to add a big cylindrical element, so we get a lot of uh, shape variety throughout the sketch. And that form contrast helps to add interest, just like having uh, multiple composite objects, having them complement each other in interesting ways uh, is a great idea. <laughs> Go for it, do it. <laughs> this is that uh, alignment tool I was just talking about. Uh, unfortunately, I'm forgetting the name. It's like a line face or something. But it lets you select two objects and select two faces, and it just aligns one object to the other on that face, which is useful uh, for exactly what we just did there. <clears throat> we could have also done that by throwing the 3D cursor on there, snapping it to the center of the polygon, and then dropping a cylinder in on the 3D cursor, aligned to its rotation always multiple ways to accomplish things. I think the way I did it there was probably marginally faster. <clears throat> Just trying to get some interesting in and out motion on that cylinder and then kind of decided to try to just exaggerate, you know, that axis shift a lot since that was such a, something I really wanted to do in this design as opposed to the last one. Figured a better way to exaggerate it would be to really push the length of this element coming off, so. That was the reasoning for pushing that cylinder way out there after fiddling around with it for a little bit. 
<clears throat> Gonna take advantage of the mesh machine booleans and uh, integrating chamfer systems. It's really nice to be able to just throw in details like this on the sides of cylinders and stuff like that and just be able to integrate them so quickly. Feels very liberating. <clears throat> I'm definitely going to have to integrate something in my workflow here for uh, selection sets, but I'm going to be looking at Zen sets pretty soon, so hopefully that will uh, solve my issues. I was just thinking about that because on these parts like this that have a lot of uh, <clears throat> like where I'm booleaning round shapes into other round shapes and then integrating them together um, a lot of the times you'll want to set custom normals after that because it you know your edges get pushed around like we're seeing here when I'm adding this chamfer and so uh, this cylinder isn't going to shade like a cylinder anymore but if you transfer the normals from the original cylinder, which is kept in the stash on the object, then you can return it to the original perfect cylindrical smoothness without having to worry about what that geo has become. Uh, which is great, but getting the selection to do that on can be a bit of a pain. And sometimes you get the selection, and then you want to drop it to select something else, but then you will not easily be able to get back to it. And I think I end up having to do the whole selection twice in this video. Um, so yeah, it'll be great to have a system for easily uh, saving that. I know Blender has like vertex groups and stuff, but <clears throat> anyways, sets. Gonna look into sets. <laughs> for now, just cleaning up these chamfers on these booleans. Just cutting in some edges there to help the normals a little bit. To keep some of these edges from being displaced along the entire length of the cylinder. Yeah, this is the uh, <clears throat> first shot at the normal transfer. And then I think I have to do something with a selection change and come back to it later. You can see how it's taken me a few seconds to get the uh, selection set up. Then I have to jump over to this thing. And I can't just invert the selection because there's a third feature, which is those boxes that are coming out on the side. So. Of course it's another reason why you should always try to set up any normal, custom normal, stuff like that at the, as close to the end of the process as possible. Because any remodeling you'll pretty much have to reapply all that stuff. Trying to work in a little more variety down here in this foot <laughs> section. Pushing that wide, thin shape out. Gives us a little more contrast with the other elements there. And it helps to kind of kill the momentum from that long axis, that long angled axis. It kind of like hits an off ramp as it comes horizontal like this, and then it hits that T section at the end, kind of a, feels like a bracket for the end of it. Hopefully that makes sense. Doing a lot of hand motions that you guys cannot see. Just used the uh, bend face tool there a few seconds ago to uh, bend some faces around an edge while keeping all the vertices aligned to edges, which is awesome, really useful. Helps to break a box manually without having to use booleans so much to uh, chip off corners and things like that. 
Uh, here I grouped all the different objects, which is a machine tools feature. Uh, it lets you do Maya style groups with like empty controls that have a transform point. Um, and the reason for that was it lets me just move all the stuff around easily on one selection. And it's kind of just an automated way of uh, handling parenting, but with the added benefit of having null objects uh, to handle the actual hierarchy so that you don't have to use real content to describe the relationship of the content. I'm starting to throw decals in here, or panel lines specifically. I'm trying to roughly stick to the theory of uh, doing the panel lines first, and then once you lock in those shapes that those create, move on to the decal cards. Uh, I tried in kind of a, I tried kind of a weird panel there and I decided to get rid of it. I thought it was a little too much. We already got a lot of interest here with the uh, the angles and the axis offset. I didn't think we needed kind of curvy shapes too uncontrolled on that cylinder. generally set up these panel lines pretty much the same way I would set up booleans if I was um, quote-unquote like modeling this. It's just much much quicker to work this way. <clears throat> if all you need is the visual you know, element of it. trying to use some panel lines there to call attention to these boolean elements that we did on this cylindrical element. Just by, uh, you know, calling visual attention to uh, the areas that light more interestingly just because they have more interesting form, you know, multi-dimensional curves on the surface. Using some of these bar decals I made to uh, cap off ends of cylinders, ends of uh, panels, and things like that, I found is pretty effective. You can also use them as pseudo detail, like I did on those uh, those box extrusions there. Use some bolts as stand-ins for uh, hinges. Pretty much looks the same, except I guess the scale might be a little off because we add screws later, so the uh, hex head size won't match up. But you know, for rapid concept modeling, it's not really a huge, uh, huge issue. <clears throat> Had an issue with the decal projection here because there's a flipped normals on one of these objects for some reason. I don't even know how that happened. I've been getting that once in a while lately, and I never used to have that happen, so I think one of these new add-ons I got, I'm somehow flipping my normals with it at certain times. I'm not really sure how yet, but I'm going to try to figure that out. So now we're mostly through the panel lines, and we're moving on to building up uh, key areas where we want to have a lot of visual detail, a lot of uh, gravity, visual weight, and just figuring out how we can use decal cards in order to build up you know, the abstract machinery that'll draw the eye into these different parts. There's zero function to this overall object, so a little hard to... Uh, <laughs> to discuss in non-abstract terms. Here I'm trying to load in a lot of detail, obviously on these side flat fin parts that come out here, um, because that'll sort of compensate for that otherwise being a really thin kind of wafer surface and it'll give contrast to the other uh, more volumetric parts of the model so that they'll be able to stand out with less detail on them and you'll be able to just appreciate you know, the fact that they're curved, uh, that the shading is all good despite anything sitting on them, which is one of the big upsides of this decal workflow.
throw in a few more panels in there. It's not a hard and fast separation of like when you're done with the panel lines versus the final detailing, but... I would say at this point we're definitely in the final detailing part. It's fun to think you could pretty much just, I think I said this in another video already, but just take all the decals that you add, say you spend half an hour adding decals to a whole model, right? You could just hide those away in a collection and then do it again and then do it a few times and then you would have pretty much an array of options to pick from. Um, like it's just so quick to go through these. I was just wondering like how different you could actually get the same model looking with different uh, panel and decal setups. So I might mess around with that at some point. Cause I, I know you could generate pretty much infinite, you know, effective variations, but it would be... I wonder how far you could push the difference between them. Like if you didn't focus on just pure number of variants, you were like, let's present three, but they look completely different, and the only difference is the uh, card arrangement. Anyway, might try that at some point. Throwing in some more panels here to spice up the cylinder. Always good with hard surface to remember that, you know, objects have to be constructed and built. And so it's often better to go a little overboard on the panel lines and construction elements as opposed to underdoing it, undercooking it. I guess as usual, it's uh, harder to do cool, minimal stuff than it is to do cool, maximal stuff. Is this maximalism? I'm not sure. Maybe, kind of. It's kind of greebly. It's true there's a lot of non-functional you know, functional stuff on here, but... I, I could be a lot more excessive, I think. I think I'm quite controlled, restrained. <laughs> I think I'm a conservative here when it comes to the, the hard surface. Creating some, uh... What's the word? Linkage between these um, wire elements and the main element. Just a part that will integrate them together. Where are these soft things? I love slapping those on edges because it is so weirdly visually convincing. <laughs> It also contrasts well with those uh, those bars that are added in there because you know those are very hard elements versus those soft blobby forms. It's cool having them right next to each other. I'm trying to add a lot of depth and chunk to this top flat area. And that'll help it stand out against that relatively more plain cylindrical part. Pretty effective, just working in some final details here. Pretty much wrapping it up. I think this one went really well. Uh, I'm still building the kit, I'm still enjoying working with it, so I'm sure at least the next few videos will be pretty similar to this. So, I'll see you guys in the next one. Um, Bye.